again, want to give God the glory, and uh, it's a great opportunity um, coming into conference play. Uh, it's good to have conference play starting at home, uh, and I'm just uh, so excited for our fans, and, and they've been tremendous all year long, and going to reach out and touch them again to say, come on out again here at 3.30 on Saturday afternoon and help our football team win our first conference game uh, this year. Uh, a couple other positives, uh, we rest some players this uh, past week, and I think we're getting back uh, – uh, for the most part, some guys back a little bit more healthy. But more than anything, even guys that were healthy, uh, we just held them out of practice and uh, limited them to get their bodies all mentally and physically ready to play in this next five ball games to give us the best chance to be successful. Uh, then the other thing about positive past week, uh, recruiting. Uh, I thought it was great for us to get out and get exposure out in the country, across the country, whenever we're always far south of Texas and uh, down to Florida and up the coast of Maryland and Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and so on. Uh, obviously, it was great for us to have a great win against App State and then to go into the high schools and, and uh, talk about Liberty University uh, in, in every aspect that, that we stand for. So I thought that was a positive thing this past week. And then just a, one stat that I really uh, looked at and, and really was pleased as we're evaluating our whole football team as what we've done offensively, defensively, and special teams. Overall, that uh, penalties, uh, we're uh, in the top in the country as far as the fewest penalties per game. We only have four, an average of four per game, which is, uh, puts us up there in the top 10. I think we're ninth in the country. So uh, there's a lot of other positives that go on, but I just chose uh, one or two of those things. And now as we play Gardner-Webb going into the, uh, the first conference game, uh, Carol McRae has done a tremendous job there. Uh, as a head football coach, um, uh, I think he's made them relevant. And I think he's made them relevant from the standpoint of uh, he's beaten some teams in the Southern Conference. He's beaten teams there in the Colonial Conference. Uh, he's uh, beaten Charlotte uh, and some other teams. And he's been very, very competitive in a lot of football games uh, since his arrival. Defense, their scheme is uh, very, very solid. Uh, they play very hard. Uh, I think one of the biggest things about it, their uh, defensive side of the ball is uh, they make you earn your yards. Uh, they don't make a whole lot of mistakes. Their people are using the right place. And so you got to make uh, great uh, blocks. You got to be finished their blocks. You got to make the great routes. Uh, you got to be very disciplined in what you do because they make you earn what you do on the offensive side of the ball. So they have a very good uh, team defense. Offense, uh, you know, it starts with the quarterback, Lewis Beatty, uh, has done a tremendous job in his career. Uh, at Gardner Webb, I think he's one of the top five uh, NCAA and active uh, career leaders in completions, uh, attempts, and yards. So again, we got our work cut out uh, against him. Uh, a senior, he's seen it all, he's done it all. So nothing's going to surprise him. Nothing's going to throw him off beat. Uh, so we got to play our best football game, uh, particularly a defensive side of the ball, and really on all sides of the ball. Uh, their receiver, uh, obviously, last week. Uh, uh, again, uh, Kenny Cook uh, has played as well as anybody could play in the country. Uh, you know, 250 plus yards of, of uh, receiving yards is outstanding. Uh, in some cases, that's a career for some people, and some it's a, it's a season for some people. And he does it in one football game. So obviously, we got to keep our eye on him. Uh, again, we're not going to totally stop him. We're going to have to limit him to what he gets done and accomplished, and hopefully, we keep him out of the end zone and uh, keep him out of having some explosive plays. Um, uh, as far as their special teams, uh, I really feel uh, that we got to make sure that our special team is going to match their special teams and even be better. Um, J.J. Hubbard, the return guy, punt return and kickoff returner that run one back for a touchdown also this year. I think he's done it every year that he's been in, uh, around on their football team. So uh, that's something that we got to make sure that we keep our eye on and get things done in the right way in the special teams. Uh, also, Gardner Webb, they won four out of their last five ball games, so they're playing very, very well. Uh, and, and again, they the first two ball games or so, they did not have Kenny Cook, so the, uh, I think that they've got momentum going. They're playing well, they're playing with confidence, and so uh, they're, they're on the rise there. Um, injury report Macon's out, O'Grady's out, Sigmund's probable, um, Wesley Scott is questionable. The keys to the game. Uh, I always got to start off with we must win the turnover margin. It's no question as I've looked back in the history we've been here, uh, whenever we've uh, won the turnover margin, we've won the football game. Uh, so we got to keep that going. Um, we must win the line of scrimmage. Offensive line, our defensive line, we must win the line of scrimmage. And that's what I mean by that statement. And I think if those things happen, then I know we have a greater chance to be successful. 
And the last thing is win the special teams phase. Uh, again, I'm not saying we got to win all six phases, uh, but we must win the majority of the phases in special teams. Uh, I think another area where we've uh, had a situation where we haven't played as well uh, is that we have not won the uh, special teams phase. And I think that this is going to be very, very important in this ballgame. Open it up to questions. <clears throat> When you went back and looked at the defense over the bye week, what were the biggest things you identified in terms of uh, what, what needs to happen to get better better in terms of not allowing so many yards? Tackling uh, was one area there that we, uh, we got to get better at. Um, a few things that people are in place to make plays and didn't make plays. Um, scheme wide wasn't necessarily um, a, a total issue. Um, and then there are some different things on you know, assignment wise that a couple of people uh, we're not doing their job. But overall, I think we can get it corrected. We are going to get some things that are going to make some adjustments, both scheme-wise and personnel-wise, to see if we can help our football team, particularly on defense, to play better than we have, uh, particularly in the last three or four ball games. How big is the possibility of getting Nick Sigmund back just in terms of, uh, obviously, his talent, but just the way it kind of stabilizes the whole rotation there? Oh, it's a plus. Uh, you know, uh, we, we'll move Lou Ellum uh, if it continues. Uh, hopefully this week he uh, works out very well for us. So Lou Ellum will go to the wheel position, back to his normal spot. Uh, Nick Newman there, those two guys there rotating. So it puts us in a little better situation. But, again, those guys have played fairly well, so it's good we got experience there. Again, he's played a lot of football. Nick Sigmund's played a lot of football, seen a lot of different things. And, and again, just his presence being out there I think helps our football team. And uh, we'll see how it all works out here at the end of the week. <clears throat> Coach, how much do you harp on this being the start of the second season, or do you even have to with your players? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, we all know where it's at and where it is. is uh, automatically, you know that this is our first conference game, playing Gardner Webb. And uh, again, uh, this part of the season, uh, every game is very, very meaningful. Uh, this one, uh, as you get into conference, is definitely a lot more significance uh, that you need to get done as far as that goes. So I have no question and no. Uh, reservations that our guys going to be ready to play this football game here uh, just based off of it's the first conference football game. I don't know much of a chance you had in the open week to kind of watch some of the other teams and games and stuff, but what, what, what are your thoughts on the conference at this point? I mean, everyone's got a winning record, you know, this deep into the season. It, it looks like it's going to be pretty open in the air. Uh, I didn't see a whole lot of games of uh, we get all their tapes and stuff of that nature, but I was so focused on uh, trying to get our team to play better offensively and defensively, obviously recognize some scores and, and those kind of things. But it's great for our conference. Uh, I think can give a lot of credit to our commissioner, a lot of credit to all the athletic directors really throughout the whole conference. And no doubt you got to give a whole lot of credit to all the head coaches and all the coaches. Uh, that are in the Big South Conference, that uh, we have a lot of great football coaches because they're teaching, they're developing their players, uh, and, they're, and they're playing outstanding football to go outside of our conference. And I believe we're somewhere around 20 and 5 or 21 and 5 or whatever non conference uh, FCS opponents with the Big South Conference. So it helps to give us a better um, uh, recognition throughout the whole uh, country about uh, what this uh, Big South Conference is all about, what our football teams are capable of doing, and what they have done. Uh, so that's all you want to do in life is improve. And so, therefore, I think the Big South Conference, is no question, has improved uh, in, in every play as far as all the, all the schools. What's the biggest key to shoring up some of those issues on the return game, both, both covering returns and, and fielding and punt and kicks? Well, I think the covering part of it is the placement of the kick. Uh, that's probably the number one thing that always starts out of here is that they put the ball where we have told them to put it. Uh, and then that things do happen. Then we got to get guys to get off blocks, uh, and they got to stay in their lanes and use their hands to make the tackle. On the return side of the things, I think we just continue to work with people. Again, you decide on personnel. Do you make a change? Uh, throughout this whole week, we had uh, three practices. Uh, we kept some guys after extra to uh, get return games where the ball was up in the air, where the ball was on the ground, and, and how to play all those things. So I think it was a lot more repetition will be the number one thing that we worked on in the uh, bye week to make sure that our return people handled the ball properly uh, and then our blockers uh, being able to uh, execute the game plan and their uh, blocking as they should. <clears throat> you kind of elaborate on, on Beatty a little bit and what he does that you know kind of concerns you from an offensive standpoint. 
Oh, I think he got uh, be able to get the ball to his uh, playmakers. Uh, you know, it's not just actually Kenny Cook. I think Swinton, another senior receiver, has done a very good job. Um, their tight ends are very good there. Um, I think it's Estes and um, Cranfield, the two tight ends, 186, number 86, and number 83. Uh, so they have multiple guys that they can go to, and they've been very, very productive. They have, they have been able to make the big plays when they need to make it, where there's a third down conversion, where there's a touchdown or a great catch. Every one of them have made great catches when people have been on them and covered them very, very well. So he's able to get the ball out and, and put the ball in the right place and uh, putting his team in position to, uh, where they can have an opportunity to be successful in, in making plays. What's the biggest challenge in trying to cover Kenny Cook? Uh, breaking off the rhythm of the two of those as far as Beatty and, and Cook, or really all the receivers. Um, uh, the timing of what they're doing, uh, where they don't have the ball thrown at the spots that they want them to. I mean, every offense has that. Uh, there's all different ways to do it. Some is just causing pressure. Some of it is is just changing up the secondary looks that you give them. Um, and so I think we'll do a multiple of those things, and uh, hopefully we can be successful at it. Along those lines with, uh, with Cranfield, you mentioned him as well. Uh, uh, what kind of a matchup problem is he? Uh, I don't think there's anything we're going to do drastically uh, different than what we've uh, have done in the past. Uh, again, it's more about us than more about them. Uh, so we're really more focused on what our players can do and then putting our players in the best position where they can be successful. So we got to understand what schemes they run, but we're not so much in trying to, to match up or do they got a better match up against us and this and that. Um, again, we got to play better football on defense, and I expect us to do that. Uh, DJ hold up after the App State game and 29 carries a lot for him and, and how important is developing somebody behind him but just to ease his workload a little bit while uh, Macon's getting better we're gonna ride him until we ride him uh, to be honest which and he felt good uh, obviously he was sore uh, that's, that's that's natural uh, but the bye week came in a good opportunity for him and uh, you know there's no ill effect uh, basically having 29 30 carries that he had against App State he's ready to go Tanner Hartman went out a little bit for that Appalachian game. Aaron Campbell got some valuable reps. How do y'all think he played uh, up in Boone? Campbell did good. He did well. Uh, again, we've uh, you know, Campbell's actually played quite a bit of football. Um, you know, he played a lot of football at the guard spot. Right now, we got him at tackle. He could go to guard too if we absolutely necessarily need to do that. But right now, we think he's best suited to play tackle. And so uh, we're very pleased with him, and uh, you know we're glad to have him on our team. Uh, again, we always know there's going to be some injuries that occur, and we got to have the next guy ready to play. And he was very, very valuable in the Appalachian State game. I think uh, he was one of the biggest reasons why I think we had an opportunity to win the ball game because he stepped in and did a, a, a really good job. Coach, uh, bye weeks are great, but how eager can you tell from the players that they're ready to, to get back into this thing? Well, I think it's a combination of both. They were uh, excited about a break, uh, but also excited to get back to work here and, and knowing we got to accomplish the goals that we have set. And uh, we know we got a tough challenge ahead of us. Uh, they're enthusiastic. They're truly engaged. Uh, they came in on their own and, and, and spending some time with our coaches and, and, and really trying to get better. And that's what we talked about, challenging them that, uh, you know, every day and every week you got to try to get yourself to be a better football player, both mentally and physically. And uh, I feel good about what they have shown, and uh, we anticipate them to do well once the, uh, the game starts. Can one game, one really solid game, kind of be a breaker, break, breakthrough game for a guy like Dante who, uh, you know, really performed well against Appalachian State? And how good can uh, your offense be if he plays at that level? Well, I think time would tell. Uh, like anything, uh, we're all human beings. And uh, uh, when you have some success in doing things, you do uh, gather up more confidence uh, and you're able to have some more success. And now it's a matter, uh, can we see it on a consistent basis? And that's, that's what life is all about is, oh, you're able to do it day after day, time after time, month after month, year after year. And that's what defines a person as being a, an outstanding or a great uh, person, great player, and so on and so forth. So uh, I anticipate him to do uh, things uh, continuing. Uh, it, it will help our offense in a great way uh, where um, you know, we can throw the ball to everybody, which that's what we have into it. Obviously, there's people a little bit more than others. But if he can do the things that he showed at App State, then uh, I think we can continue to be an explosive offense. The, was the rhythm that you guys had at App State on offense, was that as good as, as it's been in a game that since you've been here, the way that you guys were able to kind of spread it around everybody? 
Um, probably if you value the competition, probably I would say yes. Uh, there's other games. I think we've had some uh, outstanding series where series after series we've scored touchdowns and so on. But I think the um, uh, the point of the emphasis of this game and the competition of an FBS opponent, uh, that was probably a, a really great job of our number one, our offensive staff putting together a great game plan. And then our players going out and doing it uh, and, and doing it for four quarters and even more uh, than four quarters. So uh, that was great to see. Uh, and now the big thing is can you do it consistently? Again, I think the last two, a couple of ball games, two or three games, we've been very consistent on offense. And, and now we got a tough challenge here to to do it here in the conference play. With your kicker, uh, John Lunsford, on the verge of breaking the program record for consecutive extra points to make, uh, how would you evaluate his performance as a whole this year? Well, I think this is his best year. Uh, that's good to, good to, to see it, good to uh, see that he's actually doing it. Uh, and uh, we expected that to happen. And uh, he's worked on it really hard. And uh, it's pleased to see that he is kicking as good as anybody in the country. And uh, we just hope that he can continue to do that. So we're just so happy that he's a part of Liberty University football program. Uh, Justin Fritz was one of your most improved player on offense in the spring. I see you're trying to get him more involved in the kick return game and moving up a little bit. What, what's he done in practice to kind of earn those opportunities? Worked hard. He's worked very, very hard. He's uh, been working extra after practice. He's been. Uh, wanting it to uh, work at it, wanted to show what he can do. He's, he's working. We just told him, hey, we just got to see you work. And uh, if you see you work in practice and do all the things that we tell you to do in the weight room, uh, watching film, all those little extra things, then we'll, we'll give you an opportunity. He's done all those things we've asked him to do, so he deserves an opportunity.